What's going on, YouTube? This is the Pop Culture Junkie here, and today is Monday, February 20, what, 4th, 5th? 26, that's right, today is February 26th, and it is uh, the day after the WWE's pay-per-view network special, the Elimination Chamber for 2018. We had a lot of very interesting moments during the show. It definitely was not the worst show, okay? I enjoyed some parts of it. I won't say at all that it was the best. I definitely don't think we saw the best Elimination Chamber matches uh, last night compared to previous Chamber matches. Honestly, still the very first Elimination Chamber is still the greatest one of all time. Not only because of the participants in that match, but the storytelling that was done. So, the big news, big headlines going into this show was, number one, of course, we had the contract signing for Raw with Ronda Rousey. We had the men's elimination chamber match where the winner would go on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Then, for the first time ever, we have a women's elimination chamber match. That's right, first time ever, Alexa Bliss was going to defend the women's title against uh, five other women and uh, see if she could outlast them and uh, retain her title or not. Now, in addition to those two matches, we were only given two other advertised matches. We had Bray Wyatt versus The Woken, Matt Hardy. And then we had a stipulation match of Nia Jax versus the undefeated Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. If Nia Jax was to win, then she would be automatically added into the women's title match at WrestleMania and making it a triple threat. So let's go over the card itself. Okay, our opening match of the night was the women's elimination chamber match. They got to open the card, and it was a interesting match. I will say this. It was a very good down-the-middle match. Uh, I didn't think anything was over-the-top exciting. I did find it very interesting that Alexa Bliss was the last one to enter the ring, and I know that there have been a lot of talk and rumors online that maybe Alexa Bliss has been injured or she's just not 100% to where she could wrestle a full match, and that might have been why she was the last one to come out of her pod for the chamber. We did see a few interesting moments in there. I really enjoyed Mickie James. She, I thought she looked amazing uh, dressed up. She kind of had like a Glamazon Wonder Woman outfit going. I thought she looked really great, and she did a lot of great stuff in the cage match itself. And of course, the big spot for her was she climbed up to the very top of the pot. She did a flying leap onto Sonya Deville to eliminate Sonya, which was nice. Uh, Mandy Rose, of course, was the first eliminated. Then we also had Sonya Deville eliminated next, and we got down to what I call the core opponents in the match. We had Bailey, Sasha, Alexa, and Mickey. Okay, we had a little bit of a triple threat going for a while with Bailey and Sasha. And then here comes uh, Alexa. Now we get down to the finals, and you have Sasha and Bailey going after Alexa. You think, okay, the two buddies are going to gang up on Alexa and then get rid of her, which would have been the smart move. Instead, at one point, Sasha turns on Bailey, kicks her off of the pod. Uh, I've seen a lot of people making little memes and gifs already, calling it like a Lion King moment, similar to where Scar uh, throws Mufasa off of the cliff, whatnot. <laughs> Uh, that was a little extreme comparison, but still. Anyways, we get to the end, and it's Sasha versus Alexa. Alexa does get the pin over Sasha and retains her title, which was a nice surprise because I had thought it was going to be Sasha that was going to win, but I I prefer this. I'd rather have Alexa Bliss, who's been champion for several months. I'd rather her keep the title and go on to face Asuka if that is who she's challenging, which we still have no clue who Asuka is going to challenge. And at least for the moment now, it seems WWE still does not have a clue either. Next, we have a unannounced tag team match that we were not aware we were going to be getting, but we have tag team title match of Cesaro and Sheamus, The Bar, defending against Titus Worldwide of Apollo and Titus O'Neil. Of course, Apollo no longer goes by Apollo Crews, just Apollo. So this match really was just a little bit of a way to come down from the chamber match. Really not much happened. The Bar retained the titles, and they're going to continue to defend the titles. Um, thinking they're going to end up dropping the belts possibly to Gallows and Anderson at WrestleMania. Uh, I could see maybe finally uh, Finn Balor gets the IC title from The Miz at WrestleMania. That way the, the club has titles, something like that maybe. Okay, our next match there was Asuka versus Nia Jax. And again, if Nia Jax wins, she will be added to the women's title match at WrestleMania, whatever Asuka decides to challenge, I guess, uh, making it a triple threat. Uh, this match was okay. I mean, I enjoy Asuka's matches no matter what. I think she's very entertaining. I think she's a great wrestler. But the match itself kind of dragged on and on, and it really gave me a lot of sense. Like, okay, they're really trying to make us think that that Nia has an opportunity here to actually win, and I just didn't see it. The match ends with Asuka rolling up Nia for the pinfall, 
But of course, Naya has to attack Asuka afterwards, and she even rams her through the barricade next to the ring announcer. Really, it's like, okay, this feud will continue. I don't know that they did this just to get Asuka out for a few weeks because they don't know what to do yet. I'm feeling, how about we get tonight on Raw, we get Asuka versus Nia Jax in some kind of street fight, Falls County Anywhere match uh, to settle it, and then Asuka begins her actual feud on who she's going to choose. And I still think Asuka should do it where you're not sure if she's challenging Charlotte or Alexa. Have her tease. You know, come out and, and tease things, you know, uh, during an Alexa Bliss match. Maybe she comes out and kind of walks around the ring, examines, you know, observes. Then have her show up on SmackDown during a Charlotte match, same thing. I think they really need to play it back and forth, okay? Because as we know already, Asuka is going to get to challenge either title, at least, it seems, because uh, for the foreseeable future, it does not appear that Ronda Rousey is going to get a actual title match at WrestleMania. She will have a match, though. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, then our next match, we have Woken Matt Hardy against Bray Wyatt. Matt Hardy won after hitting a twist of fate. This match was very uneventful itself. I still don't understand why or how they screw up something so easy. This match, this feud... Could have been something a lot better if they had just done the Woken Matt Hardy gimmick a lot better. Okay, the gimmick itself worked on other companies. Let Matt just do his thing, but they had to make a twist on it. You know, put a WWE twist or spin to it. And I think that helped water it down a lot. On top of that, Bray Wyatt is a phenomenal character and they have completely ruined it over the years. I don't understand how they came up with this amazing character and then decide, you know what, we're going to find every which way to make it seem like it's pointless or worthless. And it's just been such a waste. It's such a disappointment. So following that, we have our contract signing with Ronda Rousey. First, we have Kurt Angle come out. Crowd pops, of course. Then we get Triple H's music, followed by Stephanie coming out with them. And the audience, you can tell, is already like, oh, so it can't just be Kurt Angle signing the new hot, you know, prospect. No, it, okay, it has to be... Stephanie has to have her face right here in the middle. She has to be front and center. What I don't understand is what I don't understand is if you're gonna do this all just to set up Ronda tagging with somebody against Triple H and Stephanie at Mania, why not at least give Kurt Angle the GM of Raw? Why not let him bring in Ronda on camera at least and give off the impression, hey, Kurt Angle was able to out finesse Shane and, and Daniel Bryan and outsmarted them to sign Ronda to Raw where they couldn't get her to SmackDown. Something like that. They still have never said anything about why SmackDown didn't try to get Ronda Rousey. So why not just have Kurt Angle come out, handle the contract signing, and then have Stephanie and Triple H interrupt and start off something like that with bringing up the past about what happened at WrestleMania 31 and the arm bar and all that stuff. You know, something like that at least. So anyways, Triple H and Stephanie come out and they give a speech and whatnot, talk about, you know, Ronda. Ronda kind of, you know, gives a little shy speech and I didn't, I did not like how she kind of went a little too emotional too fast. Uh, I think that's one of the big issues I've had with the women's division over the last few years is it seems their idea of a woman giving any kind of inspirational or moving speech, it has to immediately involve tears. Even, for example, earlier in the night when Alexa Bliss won the Elimination Chamber match, she gave a speech with Renee Young interviewing her, and she actually almost seemed like she was going to turn face before she swerved all of us and turned and kept her heel persona. But to do the face turn, she had to break out the tears and fake emotional stuff, and again, it just irritates me. Trust me, I've known many women in my life that are strong role models and... They don't go straight to tears when they're being very passionate about something, okay? That does not require that at all times. And yet it seems every time a woman in wrestling loses a match, she has to cry. Every time she wins a match and it's it's an amazing accomplishment, she has to cry. It's like, no, just be badass, okay? Especially, hello, Ronda Rousey, you're supposed to be the baddest woman on the planet. You know, you have that moniker. You are accomplished, okay? You're an Olympic winner. You have won UFC titles, okay? You are a legit fighter. You are a legit strong role model for women to look up to for what you've been able to accomplish in the sport industry. You don't need to go emotional right away. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I especially like if you watch the show itself or you didn't see it or if you may have missed it, uh, during the segment where uh, Rhonda's talking about saying how, oh, I don't want to 
uh, just be given a title match. I want to earn it. Pay very close attention to Kurt Angle. He is just rolling his eyes, and you can see him mouthing the words like, oh my gosh, like, oh, get this over with. What is this? Now, I get that he's probably saying this because they it leads to the next part where he's you know, blabbing about what Stephanie and Triple H really think of Ronda and why they really wanted to sign her. Because apparently, according to Kurt Angle, this is the story they're going with is the only reason Triple H and, and Stephanie want to sign uh, Ronda is so that they can get her uh, under contract, under their control, and then they can do whatever they want to her to get back at her for the whole embarrassment thing from WrestleMania 31. But truthfully, I'm sitting here watching this, hearing her say this stuff, and then I can see Kurt Angle saying, you know, the mouthing the words he's saying, and I'm feeling like he's going, what like most of the audience is going, like, oh my gosh, this is the storyline we're getting to start with. Stephanie has to get her, her you know, big ego right dead center again, right, anything involved with the women's division. Stephanie has to get involved right away and be like, nope, it's me. I did this. I've done all this. It's like, no, you don't. You don't have. You haven't done anything compared to what the women that actually set foot in that ring and have done for the sh for the business. But yeah, that was just a really funny reaction to see from Kurt Angle. So we have a little back and forth confrontation with uh, Stephanie. She gets to slap Ronda, and then Stephanie runs off. Triple H ends up getting uh, put through a table by Ronda, and we just get a mean stare down of Ronda. Uh, yeah, I, I, once again, it didn't make any sense. Stephanie slaps Ronda Rousey across the face, but she gets to get away without anything happening to her. And Triple H takes the bump instead. It's like, oh, once again, Stephanie wants to be this big bad villain, just like her daddy was in the Attitude Era, okay? Vince was the one that was always, you know, doing something to Stone Cold or something to other wrestlers as well, but mostly to Stone Cold. But what happened? Stone Cold would get his hands on Vince and whoop his ass and and stomp a mud hole in him. He'd make him bleed. He'd bust him up. He'd knock him around, everything. Stephanie does all these things over the past years to, like, Vicky Guerrero, to the Bella Twins, etc. All these women she looks down on but with her 12-inch high heels that she doesn't need to be wearing. And she never gets hers in the end. Nobody ever gets to actually get over on Stephanie. She just gets away with it. And the only thing close to it was when Vicky Guerrero was leaving the company, they let Vicky Guerrero shove Stephanie into that mud bath thing. That was it. That's the most retaliation anyone's ever gotten. Look back a few years ago when the Bellas were feuding with Stephanie and Brie was going to fight uh, Stephanie at, at uh, SummerSlam. And what happened? Nikki turns on Brie and ends up letting Stephanie win and whatnot. Again, no one ever gets their final anything on Steph. It makes no sense at all. How are you a true heel if you never get your comeuppance? Nothing. Okay. Moving on. That was the contract signing. Moving on, we're down to the main event. The main event is a Elimination Chamber, seven-man Elimination Chamber match. That's right. We have an extra man added since uh, Jason Jordan is injured. Seth Rollins ended up getting put into the cage match. So the winner of this match goes on to face... Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Now, what we get is a decent timed out chamber match. The match was uh, very slow at first, and it took a while for any momentum to really start picking up. So Braun Strowman, once he gets in the ring, and after everyone's been in entered into the ring, he just starts eliminating everybody. He eliminated The Miz, Elias, John Cena, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins. Braun eliminated five of the opponents in the match, okay? And then it comes down to, of course, him versus... Roman Reign. Now, WWE, you had an unbelievable opportunity here. You had the opportunity of a lifetime. The entire world going into this pay-per-view was already expecting since last year's Mania, you're going to have Roman go over just to get him into that main event against Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. The whole point for this past year has been you wanted to keep Lesnar as champ just so he can lose the title to Roman Reigns and people would be like, oh my gosh, he defeated the Beast who's been champion for all this time. Now the world expected that. Why not give us a swerve we deserve, as I want to say. You could have gone with either Seth Rollins or Finn Balor as a total surprise. But you know what? You had Braun Strowman go in and defeat five guys in a row. Let him just sweep the cage. Win against everybody. Eliminate everybody himself. Go on to face Brock. Hey, guess what, WWE? You love the big men, right? Vince loves the big man. 
There you go. You got the biggest man in your in your ring right now, Braun Strowman facing Brock Lesnar. There's a colossal, you know, battle of the titans there. Let's just go with that because at least the fans would be getting something they want and not have to sit through another Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania that the fans don't want to see and the fans are going to boo out of the building. On top of that, is this going to be the main event? Is this going to be the final match of the night, even though Shinsuke Nakamura is the Royal Rumble winner and the Rumble winner should get the main event match against the champion he chose? Okay, it should be AJ versus Shinsuke in the main event for the WWE title. The match is still on, but we're not sure if it's going to be the main event. And now that they have Roman in there, who knows if that's going to be, you know, the main event anymore. So yeah, once again, this made no sense at all. So we have Roman Reigns pinning... Strowman after two spears. That's right. Braun Strowman who can push over an 18-wheeler. He can use grappling hooks to pull down staging equipment. Uh, he can knock over ambulances. I mean, he's just the monster among men, as they call him. You know, he's, a, he's his own beast. Yet he can't kick out after two spears that are the worst spears by almost anybody. Okay, just... Uh... And here's something I want to point out. I'm not even upset because I knew going into this show that they were going to do this. I knew. Everyone knew. I was waiting for some kind of surprise, something to give the fans a little bit of something else to believe in or look forward to. But I was just like, okay, Braun Strowman got to dominate everybody else in the chamber. Here comes Roman, just going to pin him, and that's it. And there it was. It happened. Okay, so I'm not even mad, not even upset, because, again, we knew it was going to happen. I saw it coming since last year's WrestleMania, so shouldn't be surprised that it happened. But there you go. That's our Elimination Chamber show, uh, showing off the air. Of, but, oh, first, I'm sorry. First, as soon as Roman wins, he gets to smile for a brief second, and then Strowman, and of course, Strowman has to power slam Roman so that the fans at least are happy and it sends them out going like, well, Roman Reigns is going to go on to face Brock at Mania, but at least he got beat up really bad at the end of the show. So what happens? Braun Strowman, after the match, he hits Roman Reigns with a couple of power, running power slams, okay? These are the same moves that eliminated pretty much everybody else in the show, and then, on top of that, he throws Roman through one of the chamber pods, completely breaking one of the walls of the pod, and Roman is laid out, and that's how the show goes off the air. Now, just before this match, they announced that on Raw Talk, which is after Elimination Chamber on the network, after the pay-per-view, they would have the winner of the chamber come and sit down and talk with Renee Young uh, during Raw Talk. Well, obviously, we just saw Braun Strowman just completely kill... Roman Reigns by power slamming him multiple times, throwing him through the pod. Okay, Reigns should be strapped to a gurney and taken to a hospital after all that. But no, uh, they go to Raw Talk after the show, and John Cena comes in, sits down, has a little pout, you know, pity party for himself that he didn't win, and then walks away. And what do we get? We get, here comes Roman Reigns. Uh, dude doesn't look like he even was in a match. It seemed as if as soon as the show went off the air, they were like, hey, come back here real quick. We're going to towel you off. We're going to make sure you get your man bun put up and then go go get on the microphone there. And yeah, he just went and sat down at the table. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm a little tired. Oh, I'm a little winded. Dude does not look like he was beat up or hurt or anything. I mean, just his salesmanship is horrible, okay? Just, dude, learn how to sell. I think still one of the greatest moments in the last few years was selling was... The Shield versus Evolution, and it was like uh, they went all over the ring, all over the arena, whatnot. After the match, uh, you have the Shield sitting at a table, getting ready to be interviewed. You have Seth Rollins kind of just laid back in his chair, trying to you know recover. You have Roman Reigns kind of just leaning forward with his hands on his knees, just like eh, whatever. He looks over to this far right, and he sees uh, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose is head down on the table. Completely exhausted and, and like, really showing, we just were in a fight. And even Roman's, like, looking over and he's almost like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I guess he's selling. Oh. It's like, dude, learn some selling techniques before you get into another match of any kind of high caliber where you're going to get your butt whooped. Okay, so that's my two cents on this. This is the Elimination Chamber for 2018. It was, I, in my opinion, I give it about a 6 out of 10. It wasn't a bad show. It wasn't a great show. It was just average. Nothing surprising happened. There wasn't any kind of really big debut or surprise appearance, anything like that. Uh, everything kind of went just like you expected it. One other key thing that we did not get to see tonight that we'll probably see tonight on Raw maybe even next week if they want to wait a week we did not get to see the appearance of the undertaker the rumor was undertaker might 
might make an appearance during the chamber. Maybe the, the gong will hit, the lights will go out, he'll appear in the ring, and he'll cause Cena to be eliminated. But no, they're going a different story here because during the Raw talk with John Cena, uh, he's sitting there going like, I don't know what's going on. I, I mean, really, he was going for the full dramatic role right there, it seemed like. But he was going like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a WrestleMania match, and I just I just can't believe it. I'm, I'm 41. I should have a match. I don't see what the storyline is going to be necessarily going into WrestleMania with him and Taker. I'm very curious to see what they do, and uh, and I just really, I don't even think Undertaker should be wrestling another match. The last few matches with uh, Roman and Brock and, and Bray Wyatt and whatnot, they just were not impressive. I don't think Undertaker's had a great match uh, since CM Punk. And before that, I don't think he had a great match since uh, WrestleMania 26 with uh, HBK. I don't know. Uh, I, I really feel like they've really watered down the legacy of Taker with the uh, last few years here. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show if you did watch it. And if you didn't, uh, hopefully you got to at least understand some of the uh, moments that happened uh, at the show. And I uh, hope you enjoyed my rant, as always. Well, hey, let's uh, go ahead and get ready for Monday Night Raw tonight, and we'll talk later leading up to uh, Fastlane. we got two weeks from now. we got Fastlane, SmackDown's pay-per-view weeks where AJ Styles will defend the title against Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, and Dolph Ziggler. So it's going to be a crazy little uh, bit of uh, wonder there if we're going to get a new champion before Mania. Hopefully not. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for watching, as always. I hope you enjoyed this. Till next time, this is Pop Culture Junkie. I'm signing out.